All right, just arrived for day two, a Eurobike. It's time to go and find some new, exciting, interesting tech. But first of all, let's get a drink, right? Lemon? Okay, we featured this bike quite a few times already, but when you see Jan's bike, you've got to stop or admire it. Now we've actually come outside the expo now for a good reason, because we have come to Castelli. They're a little bit outside Frankfurt, and they've got three really cool products in the pipeline coming spring next year. Now currently, the PR suit is the top of the range suit in the Castelli lineup for the triathlon suits but they've got the PR2 suit coming very shortly in spring next year. And they're actually taking a lot of their technology and know-how from the cycling world. They've currently got their BTW, a balls to the wall suit in the cycling world, and they're bringing that into this triathlon suit. Now the top half is very much the same. We've still got the same speed strips on the, on the arms, but it's the second half that material changes substantially. And the reason they've brought this material over into this suit is that they found it at at your angle, 10 to 20 degrees, a six watt saving. Now, this material is like paper. It's a stretch woven fabric. It's around 40% lighter, 40% less material. And it gets even more interesting because as you go down towards the bottom of the leg, they haven't actually added any extra material. They've just changed the weave slightly of that material and brought the Lycra to the surface in size. And that just increases the grippiness of that suit. So really, really cool. We also have a couple of other products coming. So we have some aero shoe covers. Now this isn't something we've actually seen in triathlon before. Yes, we've seen people wearing speed socks and whatnot, but these will actually go on over the shoes. Now they've done a lot of testing on these with different kind of variations of materials. What they've opted for is an inverted speed strip. So actually the material dips in for those speed strips. And then a slightly different material, rubbery kind of material going over the shoes. Now, obviously this comes down to personal preference or the type of race transition length that you're using in terms of whether you put this on in transition. Yeah, this will take some trial and error and some practice, of course. For easy access, they do have an extended zip, which you wouldn't ordinarily have in a standard cycling shoe that goes all the way down to the heel. They say at 45k an hour, you could see a six watt saving with these, which is pretty substantial over an Ironman distance. And then also using this same fabric, the inverted speed strips, they're going to be making some calf guards also coming in spring next year. And there's one more because I've just been told that they are working on their first swim skin. So this will go on over the tri suit, a hydrophobic material that you can wear in a non wetsuit swim. Four. Absolutely nothing to do with triathlon, but if anyone would like to treat me to an early Christmas present, this would do very nicely. Right, I found a brand that specializes in ceramic bearings, so it'd be rude not to come along and just spin something and see how long it lasts. But anyway, it's actually called Split Second. I had actually come across these before, but they do actually sponsor the Israel Premier Tech team and the Bike Exchange team already. And they specialize in doing OSPW sort of jockey wheels, so these oversized pulley wheel systems. Theirs is actually called the Ceramic Performance Cage CPC system. And they say it's incredibly light. I don't know how much lighter it is than other brands, but it's a carbon fiber cage and they've managed to really slim down the amount of material used. They say that also the actual ceramic bearings in there are in a sort of a closed system. So you don't need to maintain them like you do ordinarily with others. Uh, they've also just released their Shimano 12 speed and obviously got the 105 coming soon. They got a load of bottom bracket bearings as well. And over here, We've got a load of lubricant as well. Now they have actually got a chain wax. It's probably more applicable to us triathletes for sort of longer durations, but because they can, and because the Israel Premier Tech team asked for it, they've also got a time trial oil. Now this is made more for shorter time trials, probably in under an hour duration, but I'm sure a few of you triathletes might like to try it too. Personally, I'm not sure why we don't have this on TT helmets. Look at it, it's great. Right, I'm now at the Ecoy stand, which is a French helmet manufacturer. I actually sponsor the likes of 
Patrick Langer, who I'm kind of stood next to you right now, uh, Annie Haug, uh, Frederick Funk, Helly Geens, and numerous others. They've got a new TT or triathlon helm. It's the Veloce or Velos. Uh, now, they've had all those athletes in the wind tunnel, obviously trying to get a more aerodynamic setup, more aerodynamic helmet. And they've come out with this. And what's really interesting about this helm is to make it suit and fit each rider, they have actually put some adjustability in the back. Now, in that little exhaust port at the back, there's a little kind of screwdriver function that you can wind in or wind out, and it will adjust the tilt of the helmet, which is really good because I know with a lot of helmets, even myself in the past, I've actually put extra padding in the front to actually get the tail to tuck into my back more and be more aerodynamic. So they've actually built that function into the helmet. And the visor is much the same, really. It's got four magnetic contact points, uh, so you can easily install that or remove it on the fly as well. They've now included a ventilation port on the front, so you can remove this strip. It's just got a couple of magnets on either side, so you can pull that out or install it. So presumably very helpful for races like the Ironman World Championships or Kona. This helmet isn't actually available just yet, although we will have seen the likes of Patrick Langer and Annie Haug already wearing it, but I hear we'll probably see it by the end of this year, presumably available before the Ironman World Champs. You're right there. I'm only kidding. I'm at the Evox stand, um, and this is a first of its kind in the cycling world. This is called the Commute Air Pro 18. It is a commuter backpack that automatically inflates and creates protection for you should you come off your bike. It's got eight sensors in the backpack, which working with a very fancy algorithm will detect if you are in flight when you're coming off the bike and it will automatically inflate using a CO2 cartridge in 0.2 seconds. And the nice thing is you can easily then pack it back down afterwards. It should deflate in around two minutes and pack it back up, new CO2 cartridge you use again, and hopefully you won't be too injured. Right, we're on the Factor stand and I've got the Hanzo bike in front of me, which isn't particularly new. It's a blimmin' lovely bike though. Uh, we actually featured this one recently. Alex Dow sits at that sub seven attempt when he was riding with Joe Skipper. It's got an incredibly thin front end to it in terms of the profile. I love it, but that's not why we're really here because we're here to take a look at these wheels. So these are the black ink wheels. This disc wheel, the black ink zero wheel was actually only released a few weeks ago for the Giro. I'm gonna try and pull it off here now. So wait. So if I sort of shimmer this in the light a little bit, you can see the dimpling effect on it, which is just amazing. It's got an incredibly wide rim width on it. It's got a 31 mil outer width on it. So that is kind of optimized for a 28 mil tire and above. Um, and they say it weighs just over a thousand grams, but oh, feels light and feels really, really nice. I'm gonna try and pop this back up again. And whilst we're here, we've got this showstopper. Yeah, this wheel, we saw, I think it was about a year ago, being ridden by some of the pro riders. It's kind of a showpiece, showstopper, kind of just showing what's possible and what they're capable of doing. It's not UCI legal, but maybe more for the coffee stop ride. Okay, this isn't something you see very often. We're all used to using Shimano, Look, Speedplay pedals. A new pedal. This is the Patrocleats pedal. It's the Patrocleat TT22, to be specific. Um, now, this company actually started out making cleat adapters like this one here. And they have various others for mountain bike pedals, speed play, etc. Uh, essentially, it was designed to relieve pressure from the Achilles or calf. So, if you're having an issue, cramping, injury, then this could allow you, rather than drilling holes in the bottom of your shoe, allow you to push that cleat back, which a lot of triathletes do, so quite a smart device. Now they've gone into the pedal market with this. Now this pedal has no mechanism in it. It actually just relies on kind of the torsional stiffness. It wraps around this miniature cleat. So we can see this on the bottom of the shoe here absolutely minute and then the cleat literally just snaps into that i'll give it a go, Here we go. feeling strong today uh this is incredibly light as well so the whole unit is around 84 85 grams which is around 50 grams lighter than say a look keo cleat so really really cool 
And because the cleat is essentially built into the design, it means that it's a slightly lower profile, so you can actually drop your saddle a bit lower. More aerodynamic. Uh, these are available to buy. They're around 250 euros, but yeah, well done to them. Okay, we're at the Vision FSA stand and they have got loads going on here. I thought I'd start here though with a nice bright bling bike. Why not? Uh, this is of course one of the EF Education Pro Team bikes, the Cannondale Super Slice, which Vision and FSA work closely with. Uh, there's quite a bit going on here. Um, firstly, the cockpit, the aero bars, isn't necessarily new. It's the TFA and TFE um, aero bars on them. Um, they actually developed these with the EF Education Pro team, so they're quite ergonomically fitted around the forearms. They aren't custom, although yeah, there are other brands out there that are making bars that are customized to forearms, but as I say, they take a lot of data from those pro riders to make them very good. What is interesting though is this front wheel isn't actually released yet. It is one centimeter deeper than the previous. It's 91. I believe it'll probably be called the Vision Metron 91. I uh, don't know much more about it yet, but that is probably going to be get, getting released later this year. The Vision disc wheel also isn't new. Um, but I believe they have upgraded it and they've managed to shave a little bit of weight from it and it's around 934 grams for a disc wheel, which is pretty darn impressive. What is cool though is this. Look at this. This is called the Mega Tooth. It's a 64 tooth chainring. Who can even push that? And now moving on, also on the FSA stand, we have the new K-Force Wii 12 speed group set. Now, the K Force Wii group set, the electronic group set from FSA, isn't new. They had an 11 speed version before. They've obviously now upgraded it to a 12 speed, but that's not all because they've obviously they've learned a lot from that previous group set. Previously, it had essentially the brain in the front mech, which it still does theoretically, but what it used to do is take the signal from the levers to the front mech and then pass that on to the rear mech to increase increase and improve the efficiency of that and the speed of the changes they've now actually opted for the signals being sent directly to each individual derailleur so we should get quicker shifting and then also to improve the gear changing and the alignment they've actually updated the sensors or improved and increased the number of sensors in there now previously it just did the outer cogs on the rear now it will sense every individual cog and accurately get a line for that cog. So pretty cool, but what is even cooler is this bad boy. Uh, this is unfortunately a prototype bike. Um, it is actually currently made in plastic, um, but it is a prototype e-bike. And they say it's kind of just there to show what's possible and what they can do. Uh, it's got their three spoke wheel on the front. And of course it's got the new K-Force Wii 12 speed group set on the back. Would you ride it? Right, I've been really excited to find this brand. They're called Aero Sensor. Now, there have been a number of kind of live CDA aero testing devices popping up over the last few years. And this one is quite exciting because they've actually come from F1 and actually used to do aero testing for the big F1 teams. And they've brought their technology, their know-how over to cycling now. And they've also got none other than Chris Hoy invested in the company and advising. So yeah, pretty impressive. Now, this is the aero sensor device, very different from some of the others that we've seen today, which normally have these long pitot tube designs. And this has got essentially like a hole in the middle, the bit of a sensor inside there. And what they say is different about this is they can actually detect your angles with this and up to 50 degrees, which is pretty substantial. So really impressive. And rather than having to connect to apps and all this other sort of stuff, this actually just simply connects up to your Garmin head unit and can display everything live for you on there. Um, so really cool. And it will be available on other head units in due course. They've just done Garmin at the moment because of the simplicity of going through the Connect IQ app. So stay tuned, but they haven't stopped there. They've got a couple other really interesting products. So this is the aero body. This would go on the stem or just behind the elbow pads. And it measures your head position, your chest position, and your hip position. And what you can do is figure out what is your ideal or optimum position and lock that in on your Garmin head unit. 
And then any movement from that position, it will indicate via colors how far out you are from that position. So really good device for your training, maybe even for racing, just keeping you locked in that optimal and most aero position. Perhaps if you're going from indoor training to outdoors and various other things. And then in addition to that, they've also got their aerodrome device, which is probably more relevant for people that are doing testing on a velodrome. Basically lay this strip across the track and as you go over, it'll automatically lap your aero sensor and presumably the aero body sensor as well and collect all that data quickly, show it on the screen. So rather than you having to move from a position and hit something on your device, it will do it all for you. And whilst this isn't yet available, they literally have just launched, they will be releasing the products available to buy in just a couple of weeks time. The Aero sensor itself will be around 750 pounds, which is a lot, I know, but for what you get from it, and perhaps, you know, for someone coaching athletes or a team, this could be a really useful device. Whew, day two complete. This place is massive. I haven't even got around half of it, but we found some amazing new tech. In particular, those Castelli suits look slippery fast. Uh, let us know what your favorite tech is in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed today's video, please do give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and don't forget, subscribe.